I like chicken. I do actually, very much. I also like a very good movie as well. Now, speaking of chicken and a good movie, a scene from a certain movie comes to mind right now, in particular, The Matrix, starring Keanu Reeves and a host of other A-list movie stars. Now, in that movie, a particular scene where after Neo, played by Keanu Reeves, had been rescued or saved from The Matrix, and they were having a meal, I think his first meal, aboard the Nebuchadnezzar, that's Morpheus's ship. Morpheus saved him from the Matrix. And they were served some gooish-looking substance, and a conversation ensued as to what the substance was. Now, one of the programmers was explaining to Neo, and he asked the question and said, how did the machines know what chicken tastes like? Quick backstory. Now, the Matrix is about an uprising of machines. They took over the world and they started preying on human beings. So the machines became lord and master in a manner of speaking. Now, to keep human beings subsumed, because they needed to harness their bodies for energy, human beings became batteries for them. They kept them in some kind of a state and connected their minds to a mainframe system referred to as the Matrix. So while they were simply producing electrical current for the machines to survive, you human beings actually saw that they were living their lives normally, but they were just in some computer program. So back to my story. The programmer asked the question, how did the machines know what chicken tastes like? Because when you eat chicken in Matrix, it obviously has some taste. So the question that popped up in my mind is, what really does chicken taste like? What is the truth of the taste of chicken? Last night, I had a conversation with some of my co-speakers here, and I asked the question as well. What does chicken taste like to you? The person asked me the same question, and I said, it tastes like chicken. How do you explain that, really? And who is to say that my experience with the taste of chicken is the same as yours? I can only imagine I can't know for certain. So even if, conjecture here, we have different experiences as far as our taste of chicken is concerned, does that make my experience superior to yours? Does my experience with chicken, the taste of it, the right one, and yours false, brings me to the concept of truth? What is truth, really? And I'm not asking for a definition of it. I'm asking, what is the truth? Who determines what truth is? Some definition says it is the belief of persons passed down over time, it becomes their truth. Now, if I do not share that belief, and I share a different belief, does it make my truth inferior to yours, or not even truth at all? Now, truth is a commodity as well and certain professions or businesses trade in that commodity, one of which is journalism. Journalism trades in truth because at the epicenter, at the foundation of journalism, is truth. The goal of journalism is truth because journalism is people-centered. The ultimate goal of journalism is the advancement of society, the general good. And how do you propagate, how do you advance that you leverage on truth. You investigate. You get information. You process the information. You analyze the information. You fact check it. You are certain this is it. And then you push it out to people. It informs them. It educates them. It enlightens them. And it helps, it equips them to make choices that move society forward. I mean, journalists perform incredible roles, really. They also hold constituted authority accountable. Why are you doing what you're doing? Honorable, you said you would do this when you were campaigning and carrying the kid babies around during elections. What's happening now? You haven't done it yet. So it's very critical. And do note, I mentioned earlier as well, that it serves societal good. It serves the interest of the general populace. Journalism must also appreciate the roles and responsibilities of citizens as well. You must have heard several uh, security operatives in Nigeria, the Nigeria police especially, 
who are your friends. Say that security is everyone's responsibility. And they say they cannot do it alone. And they require information. In a similar vein, journalism is pretty much that way as well. What is the nexus, you might ask? Well, there are several, really. One of which is citizen journalism. What is citizen journalism? Pretty much citizens doing what journalists do in a citizen kind of way. They also gather information, they process the information, hopefully. They analyze it, hopefully. They have an intrinsic purpose for it, hopefully. And then they pass on that information to you. Certainly, they have carried out citizen journalism. However, it's very important to note, back to truth again, truth, even when it is factual, even when it is confirmed, is subject to change. Because once again, remember what I asked, what is truth really? The fact is that there are even different types of truth. So if you admit, if you acknowledge that there are different types of truth, how do you determine what is that one truth, if there are different types? For example, you have scientific truth. That which is, you know, scientists perform, they ask questions, they conduct some research, uh, consider empirical data, and formulate some theory from some hypothesis. There is subjective truth, which basically is the result of all your aggregated experiences in life. And who's to say that is not truth? There is deductive truth. You're sitting there right now, observing me. You've made certain deductions about me that maybe he likes to eat a lot, for example, since he started this talk with chicken. But all of those are truths. Now, every person here has made different deductions about me. And from those deductions, you have arrived at what you may believe to be the truth about me. But your truth is not superior or inferior to her truth. It's truth nonetheless. Now, back to citizen journalism. There are concerns about citizen journalism, and understandably so. And I will get to some of those concerns in a moment. But whatever shortcomings there are with citizen journalism, those shortcomings do not outweigh the benefits. And benefits there are humongous. I will get to those as well. But let's start with some of the shortcomings or concerns with citizen journalism. Why are people concerned about citizen journalism? Why is it raising questions, tough questions, in many circles? Number one, objectivity. Remember when I said they do this, hopefully. They analyze, hopefully. They have intrinsic purposes, hopefully. The general good is their interest, hopefully. But that may not always be the case. Because in journalism, in the true practice of it, objectivity is key. You're not trying to serve any one particular selfish interest, rather you're trying to serve the overall good. Will somebody be threatened by that? Will somebody be negatively affected by that? Inevitably so. But the greater good is the purpose. Now, citizen journalism poses a head-scratcher. How do you determine objectivity? And the citizen, by the way, doesn't have to be objective. It's also important to note that one of the drivers of citizen journalism is what makes it difficult to deal with and handle, and that is the employment of new media. As a matter of fact, citizen journalism itself is a form of new media. And with the proliferation of the internet and easy access to it, even though it is still quite expensive in Nigeria, and penetration is still relatively low compared to other countries of the world, but there is a lot more access now than we had some years or even, yeah, some years ago. A lot more people right now can bring out a mobile phone, and after pressing a few buttons, they send it online, and they have published news, as it were. So objectivity is a concern. The quality, as well. There are standards. When you turn on your radio sets or you turn on your TV, you may not be a broadcaster, you may not be a professional, you don't have to have received any training, but when something goes wrong, when a presenter or a newsreader or even an actor does something off, you feel, ah, why did he do it like that? Many people here are not trained actors, but you make jokes about some of what you've seen on Nigerian movies. Why? Somewhere or another, you've been informed, you have seen how a movie or an actor, or you've seen good acting. And by virtue of that, you can also tell when you see bad acting. So the quality is very important as well. How is the message conveyed? And 
Competition with traditional journalism is a problem as well. Competition. Because citizen journalism or journalists now see themselves as authentic voices also. They see themselves, they compare themselves with mainstream conventional media. And inversely as well, even mainstream conventional media is now struggling to compete with citizen journalism. Who breaks the news first? Who is most sensational? Who gets the most likes? Who gets the most followership? Such that people's lives and livelihoods now depend on how many people like them on social media. And even news media is concerned about that right now. How many people are following our Twitter handle? How many people are watching our videos? How many people are watching when we're live streaming? Years ago, this was things that individuals only concerned themselves with. But it's understandable because of the direction that the media is going now. It's, 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 going, it's, it's gone digital, literally. And because of that trajectory, there's a lot of concern. And conventional media is now comp finds that it's competing even with blogs now as well. And editors don't even fact check anymore. They throw everything out there because they want to just get the likes. So those are some of the challenges with citizen journalism. However, citizen journalism still helps to provide even more truths. And it's all about truths here, multiple truths. And whilst the average blogger may not have the overall interest of society while putting out a story, but some of the times at least, the stories that they put out are a true reflection of some situation. When an incident happens somewhere and somebody whips out their mobile device on the phone and they capture a video or take a few shots and they add some text to it and they publish it on Twitter or on Facebook or wherever else, it's happening real time. And people are getting informed real time. Now, even if where I work, we get that information, it would take us time to plan the logistics. It will take us time to transport that reporter to that site. But someone that, while we're busy doing all of that, getting the driver who is on duty, who is going to drive the reporter to that scene, somebody's captured videos, someone has posted it online already. And that's journalism. The person's processed the information, the person's gathered the information, the person's analyzed it, even had a context to it, and then has published it. And even conventional media, sometimes, maybe even many times, rely on these other forms as well to get news, of course, after fact-checking. Even I, when I do my, I'm a, I'm a broadcaster, I, I do talk radio, and I find that when I open my phone lines, sometimes, when someone calls in, a listener calls in to contribute to a conversation, I have found on occasion that the person provides new context, even provides new information on the subject matter that I was not previously aware of. Or while the, before the conversation started, there may have been some development which I did not have access to because I was busy in the studio. And the person mentions it, and that information might be so critical that it changes the narrative. It alters the course or direction of that conversation and adds substance to it. That is citizen journalism. The more democratic a society is, the more the need for news, and the more news is going to be spread because people have access to it, and there's a freedom of sorts to express and publish that information. Remember I said earlier as well, when I was talking about journalism and its responsibilities and its, its uh, intrinsicness, I talked about holding leadership accountable. Citizen journalism helps to entrench that as well. Because not only are conventional journalists now required to ask those very important questions and say, Mr. Honorable, why haven't you done this? Citizens now do that on their Facebook pages. They take pictures which is our road, it's terrible. And they post it and they tag the honorable, they tag the excellency, and people know that in that vicinity, this is the state of the road. In that vicinity, this is the state of infrastructure. In that other place, this is how education is. Because citizens are publishing the information, they are publishing the stories, they are doing the job of journalists. It's extremely key that we get these multiple truths. And like I said, the perceptions may vary. Objectivity might not even be at the heart of it at the end of the day. It might not even be for intrinsic purposes. The publisher might belong to a different political party and simply wants to embarrass this honorable who belongs to a different party. But does that change his truth? 
The same honorable may have fixed road A, and the people who live on road A are delighted and think he's the best thing since sliced bread. But the other folks who live on the other side of town, which he's responsible for as well, have a dilapidated situation. And their truth is, this guy is horrible. Does it make it not true? We need to be able to appreciate our different truths and have conversations about them. Not try to shut people down, not try to keep them quiet because their truths are somewhat different or even exactly opposite to what we hold to be true. And if we're going to grow as a society, make the progress that we need to, then citizen journalism is inevitable. It's here to stay. In spite of those concerns, some of which I listed earlier on, censorship, control, who's the gatekeeper, how do we ensure that proper things are done, in time we will catch up. Yes, we are lagging behind. But in time, the laws will evolve. The laws will change and will become broader to be able to handle whatever challenges we have now with citizen journalism. But is it expedient that we have it even now and allow it to flourish? Absolutely so. My truth is that it is. Ones and zeros may refer to cause and effect, um, actions and reactions. Because once again, what forms your truth is what an action that has an effect on you. If there was no action and there was no effect, I cannot form a truth. Now, if an action has taken place that's affected me and I evolved the truth from that, you may not share my truth because you may not have been affected by the same action. Does it change the fact that my truth is not truth or that even your truth is not truth? Of course not. We can hold multiple truths and allow for the exchange of these multiple truths and have conversations about them because then we have a broader perspective of what the issues are and even a better understanding as well and we're better equipped to deal with them. Literally everything, including this event and you're sitting right here watching me, is a reaction to an action. And just like the many different ways that chicken might teach to us, and in spite of that, still cause a lot of us to affectionately love our grilled or fried chicken. In spite of, once again, the different tastes. And we can still appreciate it and talk about chicken in a loving way to each other. Our multiple truths could help give us that broader view I mentioned a while ago. Improving our realities, equipping us with knowledge to create a better society. Thank you.